Hello, this is Max Drake. I'd like to talk to you about um, Glide apps and I'd like to talk specifically about favorites. Now, I've just been, I've got a couple of apps here um, for property and uh, there's a whole lot of different structures that they actually have. This one here has some uh, uh, buildings on a certain uh, property, which is the Basin Reserve in Wellington, and they've got several structures around here and they have um uh, so that's in one that's under the trust there's actually an archives where they keep the archive information uh for um their stuff and i've got plans and details on there and map reference and you can add some comments and stuff and uh so on and so forth the thing is there's a lot of project managers who are, are using like there's one landfills and quarries and then there's one so different people manage different properties so this is an ideal place to actually have um, favorites so that different um, uh, project managers who are managing those projects can easily access theirs through a favorite tab so I've been trying to figure out how that one works works um, now the first time I set this up now I am confused. Um, uh, if I go back to this app here, I've actually set up the favorites. So within the, um, in the screens, in the search screen, sorry, in the main favorite screen here, um, because I've got the components, I've dragged the component, I put the favorites right at the very tops. So let's have the information on the property, but um, uh, further down, um, uh, uh, I'll, it's a, but it's an easy one. You don't really want to be scrolling to the end. You actually want to set up your um, favorites quite early on. So this is a demonstration of there's a couple of properties for different ones. I've got an images through here. So I've got to check those up. Um, uh, so there's a whole lot of different ones. These do libraries and uh, other stuff or odd community centers and town halls, et cetera, et cetera. So the project manager can hit these. The first time I came and did this, when I actually go back to this other app here, Oops, wrong one again. Um, uh, I got the search bar through, but I didn't get the favourites through there. So when I look at this particular app, if I come to the search bar, you'll see I've got the um, favourites, the all tab and the favourites tab. Now, one of the things with the tabs is that you've actually got to have your settings such that you're using an email whitelist or public with email so that there's an email login. Um, I'm using the email whitelist and so I've got seven people to do this. Now to demonstrate this, I've gone on over to incognito tabs. So when I'm in incognito, um, I can then uh, filter out favorites based on what email I came in under. So if I've come in under a specific email, I can then go into either in the front tab, I can go um, down and what I quite like about this, I, if I'm a project manager who's managing all the properties, I can actually click at it at this high level so that I've grabbed all of those properties. Or I can say, well, actually, I'm only managing a couple of these. I'm managing this particular one here. So that's the one that I'm managing. Um, uh, so I've got information based on that. I can come through. And then if I go back to the search tab and go favorites, you'll see that that one is actually just added through to the favorites. But I've got the whole of archive, but in fact, there's only one property in the archive one, so it's not really a major issue on that particular thing. But this is itemizing by those. But if I came through and I just said, OK, then I'm going to be doing all parks and recs, I can say, right, that's a favorite there. Now, if I go through the favorite, uh, that's been filtered through at that point there. So I've got all of those properties there. So I think that works quite nicely. I, I was struggling to actually find an idea. It's like choice. When I first saw choice as a component, I thought I can't really see much use of that. And I use it all the time now. This is another one that I think is, um, uh, it's it's got its uses um, for, for places. So now one of the things when I come back into here, um, uh, this is another one that I'm doing for another lot of properties. This is to do with social housing and I've got the favorites switches through here. But if I come through to the tab and put them through and I add, oh, that one's already been added. Right, I've got to find another one. And I click that one there on. 
if I come back to the search one, it's not in there at all. Now this is in the incognito tab, so therefore I've logged in, got myself a pin number, sorry, I put an email in, got this, so let's just do that, shall we? I'll just grab that one there, I go to a new tab, and I'm just going to go into this particular one here, and uh, I end up with this. I always think this is quite intimidating. You really need a little bit of an explanation at the front here just to say um, your email address to go to this place and you'll get a pin on what it's actually doing. You know, I find this is who's grabbing my data. Um, anyway, we'll take this one here and we'll say go and get a pin for it. We will go into somewhere and find. Now, I do get a variation on things for my Hotmail account. Uh, the pin one always goes into uh, junk for my Gmail. It doesn't seem to. Anyway, I've got the pin number here. Bash in under here. Bang. And sign in. And uh, when I come across to the search bar, there's nothing there at all. I haven't got that favorites thing. So I've had to log in. I've got the favorites switch. If I just go back to my other sheet, You'll see here, um, I've got the favorite switches all in there already set up, etc., etc. So they should be working, but they don't. What I actually found I had to do was I went in, because I've already preset this up, I went into the screen and changed from list to columns. Then it comes up. Then when I go and change back to list, it comes through again. So um, sometimes you just got to give it a bit of a note. So now it's there. If I go back into my incognito tab and uh, do a refresh on that, I should now have um, my favorites column. Do, 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 do. No, I clicked back to the first one. And then if I go to the search tab, my favorites column comes through. But I haven't got any favorites ones because I've just gone through as a new email. So let's just go into Boo and make all of those ones. So that means all the properties on that particular site. So I've got a site plan, I've got a map showing where it is, um, and then I've got um, blocks. So now at the next level, so there's an estate level where you might have multiple. Then you come down to blocks. So there's blocks on that site. This one here has upper and lower floors. It's a, 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 get, you get a, a different one. And maybe I want to drill down and actually say this particular apartment, I actually haven't got the images in this one here yet. Um, and this one here, I'm going to be managing. So I want them in my favorites. So if I go back, um, now to my favorites at the top and I go favorites it filters out so I think this is really really handy thing as well I've been using uh, the comments on these ones just to reference stuff um, to capture the information in another way so it's an easy way to drill down if I'm going to go and do a site survey um, and uh, just see the properties that I'm going to go and do um, uh, I don't know if there's a clear function if you're suddenly thinking well actually I'm going to go and do a uh, a drive around uh, of 15 properties and do a little bit of an inspection. Maybe I actually just want to filter down to that. But if you've already got presets under one email, you may actually have to register under another email and do another set of filtering in it. But then you have to make sure you're on, you're on the email whitelist so that that'll work. So, um, uh, yeah, great idea though. I do like the fact that you have got filtering. I was concerned because I, on this particular one, I've got parents, children, and grandchildren that I was worried that you couldn't weren't able to do it at the, at the um, child and grandchild level, but in fact, it does work out quite nicely. So um, if I go right down to the grandchild level and I come back and I actually just say that's at the block level, and then I come back and say, actually, that's at the estate level, um, I've got favorites drilling down at a whole lot of different levels. So I've got the estate level, BAT, which has several blocks on it. I've got it at um, block level. So each individual block um, comes through, sorry, at block level, BAT A, sorry, at BAT at one block level, which has got the four units in it. And I've also got one of those units down at the next level or something like that. But it, it's quite, I quite like the versatility of the favorites. It does, um, filter out an awful lot of noise. It doesn't do it at the front sheet though. Um, that's still um, just an overall big picture, but it does the the search um, page I find 
works really well as well and the fact that I've now got the filters on there I've got these um, favorites on here um, I'm just gonna go cool um, uh, let's go ah. now that's interesting as well now that search will only actually work within the favorites but if I come back to the all it'll then do the other search oh that's very nice Anyway, I hope that's been of interest to you. Um, thank you very much for watching. Again, with the if you're testing out um, doing if you're testing out uh, doing the password protect one where you're coming in through an email whitelist, one way of doing it because they actually give you a code. Now, if I here's an example of this one here. I'm just going to grab that thing here. I use that specific code for a, a specific thing. Now, if I come through and do that oh bugger um control v uh that app again and then i try and log in again uh oh that shouldn't have done that let's just close out of those i don't know what uh, and i think i've that's my fig one good okay then i go back into this app here maybe it's remembering the other one Now I'm in incognito. It shouldn't be logging me in. Now I am confused. Um, because that incognito should... So that's the last one that I logged in on. So if I close that down, let's just close that down completely. And uh, uh, come into incognito again. It shouldn't remember me. as it should there so somehow in those tabs that is remembering me so if I tried logging in now and I say I already have a pin number um, and I go back and grab that pin number whatever it was six five six seven six five six seven it doesn't let me I've actually got to it remembers it per device but because I'm in incognito um, uh, uh, it, it, it makes you go and get another pin every single time so that's a handy way of actually testing your app to see um, that it's working and there we go I've got a new one 9720, uh, 9720 and then you sign in so yeah before I was somebody came up and gave me advice about logging in under different things and using incognito otherwise if you log in under your normal um, uh, tab page it will remember you always as that particular login or, or, or that thing so it doesn't actually give you that front interface of asking you to sign in so therefore you can't switch users when you're in the other uh, in the other mode so just be aware of that too anyway I hope that's been of interest to you thank you very much for watching and if you can give a thumbs up I'd really appreciate that thank you very much indeed